Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Tuesday, July 7th. Believe it or not, this is show 900. Oh, yeah! 900's, it's a lot. That is... More than you thought. That is more would, than yeah. I thought we would do when we were doing show number one. Feels like 9,000, am I right? Yeah, it does. Mike is... In his house, not in the house. He's in his house. How you doing, Mike? Well, I'm, I'm always in the house. <laughs> that's that's part of my personality. I mean, but we call it the he's house. Oh. I, I am curious. I have a question before. We have a great show today. We've got bounce back players, a good quick question, lots to talk about, lots of news to mm-hmm. talk about. But I am curious how each of you enjoyed the holiday weekend in a city that <laughs> is a big a hot spot for the old covid it's and hot. then uh also ooh, 400 degrees outside mm-hmm. um did you guys do anything anything special for the not much no. Here's, <laughs> so when you uh, have a wife that is part of a family of uh, 900 um oh yeah, yeah, d- yeah. in honor of this episode it's kind of nice when these holidays are like, oh, we can't really have a big get together. Oh, no. And uh, so I did a whole lot of sleeping. Uh, I'm fresh right now. I'm, I, I, did I you do feel, any barbecuing? Oh, I have done so much grilling. Uh, that is pretty much my uh, secondary occupation. <laughs> I'm a fantasy football analyst and professional <laughs> griller. Uh, yeah, I, I have made the comment to my wife about you know, I know Jason. You have a, f- a very famous tradition of being dragged along to four to nine children's birthday parties a weekend. That is correct, and those have all gone away. It's been fantastic. <laughs> did you do anything Oof. special, Mike? Uh, let's see. We did some sparklers. Okay. Uh, we had those little uh, poppy things. I don't the snappers or bags. yeah, snappers. Yeah, like just a little tiny bag of gunpowder. And so we we did those, and then I made spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. <laughs> we uh, the more household we I made a, I made a mistake. I'm enjoying this so much to hear what life has become. <laughs> we are really living happy wi- forth, living uh, wild. Um, so I you your story here, Mike, reminds me of uh, of the truth of what the Moore family did for their fireworks. And here's what I did: I was uh, uh like last year, I was too late. To get or might have been the year before, I was too late to get the fireworks. They were all sold out, mm. and so I thought I did the same mistake again this year. But when I found the stand and was like, "Oh, I could still get them," I went too far. I went v- way too far, and instead of like grabbing a couple fireworks and some poppy things, I might have spent a couple hundred dollars on oh, fireworks. What? Yes, and uh, annoyed my neighbors for far too long. And we still have so many fireworks left over. Say, well, you, you better hide those. Those are contraband now. Uh, it was funny because there's no like public uh, fireworks this year with everything going on. So the neighbors definitely made up for it. Like the hopes and dreams of my kids mm. ever sleeping that night, they were gone. It was just. There's also the Disney fireworks on, on Disney Plus. They they have the, the television fireworks. I never really got it's that. It's not really the same. No, it doesn't feel the same. But. All Just right. saying it's there if you want it. It, it is available to you. Uh, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get access right away, available right now. We did a big website update, so you can see the new website at thefantasyfootballers.com. And we're still giving away a signed Devontae Adams jersey at footclangiveaway.com, so you can check that out. Um, quick question of the day. Comes in from Lance. Lance wants to know... Well, he says, maybe I have missed this along the way over the last few hundred shows, 900 to be exact, Lance. Well, he hadn't missed this show yet. Not this one. So. Uh, but what is your guy's favorite fantasy football league type? Is it redraft? 
Is it keeper? Is it auction dynasty? What do you what do you think? I I know for me it is without a doubt it's a keeper league. Keeper leagues are uh, that's our league of record. That's my favorite. Then redraft, then dynasty. But don't hear what I'm not saying. Wow, really? I love dynasty hmm. leagues. I play in them. I, this is like saying rank, you know, burgers, pizza, yeah, from different cereal, restaurants, like, like, and steak. It's, yeah, uh, cereals in there. Well, that's, that's probably fourth on the what? list. What but just my, happened? My point here is that burgers I love and all cereal of these are things. the same tier these days. Burgers and Good. cereal are near the same <laughs> tier. I'm a big cereal connoisseur, um, but I, I like keepers because he so. The reason Dynasty is the lowest for me is because there is not quite as much action in season, which is great because it pairs nicely with your redraft and your keep, but the waivers aren't as active. Um, Keeper is that nice middle ground where it's pretty much you get a draft, a big important draft every year, Um, but there's assets in the offseason that your team and your league has that you can trade, you can work, uh, you know, trade keepers for picks, picks for picks. It, I think it just keeps the action uh, higher at a higher level throughout the year. Yeah, I, I will put keeper at number one, dynasty at number two. They're very close. Both of them have the attribute that you just said where you get to be active and play the entire year, which is why I like them more than redraft. I, you know, we're playing fantasy football and my mind just wants to take it to the nth degree all the time, which is like build the legacy, which is what a dynasty team does. If you can build a historical legacy with a team, that's pretty fun for me. Mike, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeper dynasty redraft and with keeper, our league of record keeper format being my favorite because it's, you know, there's the, the downtime in that league is is very short it's like a it's week the end yeah it's the end of the season through the nfl draft and then as soon as that time period is over then it's it, it could be as much as you want but we like them all yes without question all right let's do some news news and notes from around the league all right this just broke Pretty much right before we started recording this episode of the show, and that is, well, Patrick Mahomes. (laughs) 10-year contract extension through 2031. He was due to make $2.8 million this year. He is now due to receive $400 million plus. I would like that very much. So well-deserved. Obviously, it is a... You know, it's a gamble in the National Football League because injuries happen to anyone, but it's the kind of gamble I wish my team could make. So I'm, <laughs> I really like it. And if you're the Cowboys now, I mean, uh, Judge Giamatti, you're sitting here without a long term deal for Dak. Well, at least we got Amari Cooper paid, right? <laughs> <laughs> Took care of that. Oh, feeling good. Feisty, Brooks. So, I mean, it, and Zeke. Yeah, and Zeke, yeah. <laughs> I don't think any of us expected Patrick Mahomes to be leaving Kansas City. So from a fantasy perspective, from an expectation, I mean, he was going to be their long-term quarterback, but he's on paper now. North of $400 million is absolutely incredible. I believe as one of your uh, astute Twitter followers mentioned, Andy, that means Pat Mahomes could have Uber Eats for a month. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he could live incredible high on the hog with some... <laughs> Yes, yeah, very nice. Well, and, and we're we're still missing some details. Like they're they're leaking out. By the time you hear the show, maybe you've, we've got it all figured out. But there, there's talks that it it is a percentage of the salary cap. Like this is not even just here's he's going to make thirty five million. It's no whatever the salary cap is, he's going to make X percent. Which this would be revolutionary if it, if that's what's happening. That's never happened with an NFL contract. That's setting a new standard. I mean, Cousins, Kirk Cousins kind of changed the mold at least a little bit because he came through with the, with the fully guaranteed contract. Uh, but if if Mahomes is doing this, like this, this changes the game for franchise players, probably just <clears throat> franchise quarterbacks. I can't see uh, another player getting a 10-year <laughs> Ten year deal. There's not, but this this is wild stuff. There's man. not many that can. It has to be a quarterback to get that kind of a length of deal, and they've got to be young enough. Or Lev, Lev Bell. 
He would like that too. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure he would. He would like. I would like. Everybody would like it. I'm curious what the guaranteed part is going to be because when you sign a 10 year contract, you don't know what is possibly going to happen. Year seven, eight, nine. Uh, right. And and so, w- how much of that is guaranteed? Well, and it's funny because he'll be 34, I think, when the contract's over, which means he could sign another one. I mean, it's <laughs> yes, just a very, another very, very long one. Yeah, yeah. I I would wager that it'll be like the first five years or so are guaranteed, fully guaranteed. Worth it. All right, Browns tight yeah. end David Njoku has requested requested. That a is trade. a word. Requested a trade. I hope demanded he gets it. requested. Yeah, he uh, the the team came back and said, "Well, we do not want to trade you." And then they basically demanded. They said, "No, we we actively want to trade. We don't want to be a part of this." Which makes sense, right? I mean, they they brought in Austin Hooper. They drafted, a, I believe, a fourth round uh, rookie tight end. Uh, Injoku has not been able to um, get into any kind of serviceable playing time. Uh, with the Browns, and you know, I, I think it would make sense for them to move him. I don't think they're relying on him, and I believe other teams, you know, a, a Cowboys type of team could uh, benefit from the athleticism that David and Joku. You brings. stop it right now. You stop it with the Cowboys talk. This is a Blake Get Jarwin. Uh, they already invested in the position. Hmm. Is that so? <laughs> Blake Jarwin's the investment. According to Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Isn't this the same Blake Jarwin that was on the team when they chose to bring back the corpse of Jason Witten? Yes. Okay. Because, all right. We'll see what happens. David and Joku requested a trade. The team has come out and said that he's still part of the plans. We'll see. Uh, this is interesting. And, you know, we'll be probably talking more and more about how the COVID pandemic affects the season and the way that things go down. And we're going to try to bring you, you know, all the relevant information that we have on that front. You know, if you read reports right now, you know, NFL GMs don't feel like they're getting a lot of transparency from the league in terms of even what's the game plan going to be. But we do have a report the NFLPA has voted unanimously to recommend skipping the entire 2020 preseason. Uh, So the annual player gets knocked out for the season in the preseason mm. could not happen well the, yeah that, that's nice i mean that's it, uh, i don't blame the players at all for wanting to move forward what, what what's interesting is to me yes it this affects the ownership because this knocks out two games of money you know four games of the preseason but the the players need the preseason like the the fringe players that that's how they play their way onto those onto the team those guys who show up in in game two and game four and actually make a few plays and and secure that roster spot so i've it's it's unfortunate for them but i think it is the right move to just go no preseason get right into it yeah and there have been uh talks of the 90 man rosters being 80 man which would take 320 jobs away right away but these are not normal times so the league is trying to find a way to make it work there's also been some reports about uh the way that they're going to view you know, positive tests that are asymptomatic versus positive tests that have symptoms, right. guaranteed amount of time away from the team, uh, requirements for testing. More of that stuff's going to come out, and we'll bring you that information. Because, look, it, it's almost an inevitability at this point to say that if there's a season, there will be players that test positive for COVID. For sure, yes. yes. And then if that happens, what are the implications for their availability? Is it going to be, you know, 10 days is it going to be a month that you lose a player and you're probably going to have a variance there and you're going to need to be able to adjust your league and adjust your team and think differently about this season than you have any other season depth is going to matter in 2020 not only depth in your fantasy football leagues but depth in the nfl i mean I i look at a team like the falcons who are are pretty solid across their starting positions but they have no depth you know they lose any any major piece there, and all of a sudden, I think the the wheels could fall off. All right. The Bills' official website confirms the team wants rookie Zach Moss to, quote, play a similar role to Frank Gore. Which Frank Gore? I was going to say, I I looked at the game splits on this. (laughs) Frank Gore over the back half of the year was uh, 300 yards rushing. Yeah. Very, very little. That's the pace for the back half of the year with eight carries a game. 
That's the role that I would more expect is the eight to 10 carries a game for Zach Moss. Or would you take the over, great news. over under of 10 carries Ooh, per over, game, per under, game of, for Zach Moss? I would probably take the uh, – that's, that's a perfect line. I, I think I would take the over. I think Zach Moss will get 10 to 11 carries a game. Um, you know, in the beginning of the year, you, you, you saw Frank Gore, obviously this is part of that was when Devin Singletary was gone, uh, but he was averaging, you know, a, a, he went 11 carries, 19, 14, 17, 14, 11, nine, 11. He, he, you know, for most of his games, when he was out, out there, he was 10 carries or more. What's going to be interesting is a player like Frank Gore demands a lot of respect from an organization and from a coaching staff which might have backed them into some of those goal line carries earlier in the year. Will those opportunities be given to Zach Moss or will you see Devin Singletary with a chance around the goal line? What do you guys think? Are they always going to just default to that bigger Oof. back or do you think, because that'll make the difference, you know, much like, you know, the Philip Lindsay type of season where do you get a chance to score? I think Devin Singletary will be used around the goal line. Again, we've talked about this. I think Josh Allen will end up vulturing some of right, those right. the same way that, that Cam does. Um, historically speaking, but I, I think they they won't just rely on Zach Moss every time at the goal line. But that means that if those two guys are splitting those duties and getting vultured, it's probably low upside for any Buffalo Bill running back. It's a duty. If they split the duties, we get a duty for fantasy. And a duty is bad, is, is what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to play with your duty. No. That, that's very true. But so uh, I'm looking at Devin Singletary had three carries inside the 10 and that was game eight so this was a, a few games after his return and then they went to frank gore we've we've talked about the uh cartoonishly bad <laughs> numbers of frank gore so if if they didn't give devin singletary a try last year when frank gore was not getting the job done i would imagine zach moss will have a goal line role i don't think fantasy owners know how to think about Devin Singletary right now. No, it's very, very tough. Because there there were some hype pieces last week about him getting more heavily involved in the passing game. If that happens, oh, that could be good. And we like Buffalo. But I don't think mm -hmm. anybody knows where to draft Devin Singletary. No, he he is curious because you expect him to split time. Um, but I, I do think that he himself is very, very talented. When I watch him, he yeah. always makes the first guy miss. So I, I think he could be valuable for fantasy, but I, I see him very similar to the last two years, Philip Lindsay, a guy who is going to split some of the, you know, the carry count is very, very talented, but if you don't punch the ball into the end zone, you're going to be in, you know, oh great. He had 70 yards. He's being drafted as the RB 23 right now. That's about where I've got him. All right, one more bit of news before we move on. we got bounce back players we're going to talk about. All right, the Chiefs running back coach has come out and said he, quote, expects a big jump from Damian Williams this season. Now, I read his story. Huh? The big jump was more about his maturation in the offense when you read the story, understanding the offense. But he did say Damian's a competitor. He's going to come out and he's going to fight for this job when the draft pick happened. Uh, he said his maturation in the offense is going to be a big jump this year was the full quote from um, their running back hmm. coach. I just mentioned to Mike and to Jason earlier today that in best ball leagues, you know, I'm taking my shots on Damian Williams and Marlon Mack late in drafts. Sure. Because nobody, I mean, just the gap. I mean, we just did a mock draft episode. The gap between Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack is immense. It's four or five rounds. Yeah, it, it's like the, the Tevin Coleman, Raheem Mostert gap. That's true. That's true, where like, you ended it, up with Tevin Coleman in the last mock draft because you just kind of couldn't pass on him anymore. Right. The gap is so large. Uh, like You, you got to leave margin for, for you to uh, be wrong about, about a few of these things, and we're all very excited for the rookies. I think they're going to be great once they have the role, but when, when running backs like Taylor and Edwards Alaire are going in those early rounds, I mean – like you have to ask that question when you're drafting someone like Damien of what, what if we're all projecting this wrong? And, Cause that would be an incredible draft steal. Yeah. You're not talking about like getting it wrong on a really bad offense where it doesn't matter that much. You're talking about right. getting it wrong where a player could be a top five running back. And it was interesting, Jason, you took miles Sanders in our 12 team mock draft on the last episode of the show. Yes, sir. And 
I saw some Twitter feedback. Shocked that you didn't take Clyde Edwards Alaire over Miles Sanders at that pick. Mm. So if you want to know where the hype can get to, it can get to a very uh, Yeah, it, Clyde Edwards Alaire would not be in consideration for me there because what you saw from Miles Sanders last year was him somewhat get the role early, kind of lose the role, get it, you know, due to injury with Jordan Howard and then he took over. And now in year two, you're expecting really, really big things from Miles Sanders. I think that's going to be similar to what you see with Clyde Edwards Alaire. You're going to see some flashes. He's going to get some work early, but it's going to be late in the season when he's dominant. And coming into year two, then let's talk about Clyde Edwards Alaire. I don't want to pay, and this is in redraft and keeper leagues, when when I have to pay for a player at the draft that takes too long to get going, I I start, you know, I don't want to start one and three in my first, and then make tilt trades and tilt waiver expenses. I want guys who get off to a hot start if you're in a redraft or keeper league. And you got to remember, like, when Kareem Hunt had his explosive rookie year, it was because Spencer Ware was injured. Right. That he had the mm -hmm. opportunity so soon in that week one. I still remember those explosive plays, Alex Smith hitting him in, in stride. So he had the chance because Spencer Ware got hurt. And you'd need something like that to happen for Clyde to probably dominate from week one. Yeah, if Damian Williams, you know, tore his ACL right now, uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire would be in my first round. I, I, I mean, I think the talent is there for him to be a top 10 back, but it's just not going to happen, especially at the beginning of the year. Do you want to know what is going to happen, Andy? Oh, no, more grilling. I'm going to be eating steaks. <laughs> I'm going to eat them today. I'm going to eat them tomorrow. I don't know if there's a <laughs> limit to how much steak you can eat. But no one's going to arrest you, Jason. I am testing that limit thanks to Omaha Steaks. Uh, look, Omaha Steaks, it is, now it isn't just steak. Okay, it's a culinary master class. It's 100, 100 years of family tradition here. It's exclusive premium beef aged to peak tenderness, and it's guaranteed perfection in every single bite. It isn't just steak. It's the best steak of your life. Omaha steaks, <laughs> so smooth, so tender. So, look, order your Grand Summer Grill Out package right now. You get four free Omaha steaks burgers and four free gourmet jumbo franks. And don't forget, they've got chicken, pork, easy-to-make meals, desserts, and more. Summer is here. And the glorious sizzle of Omaha Steaks on the grill is the official soundtrack of summer. Go to omahasteaks.com mm. and type footballers in the search bar and order the Grand Summer Grill Out package today. And don't forget, you'll get four free Omaha Steaks burgers and four free gourmet jumbo franks. Fill your freezer with enough gourmet food to keep your grill outs going all summer long. Don't wait. Visit omahasteaks.com. Type footballers in the search bar to shop for the summer grill packs today. Hello, everybody. I am back. All right. We're talking bounce back players. Now, a little uh, peek behind the curtain for the listeners out there. Uh, Mike is recording from his home today. And while we have the best producers in the business, I mean, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, Bar none, the best. Two different people, if you two didn't different know people. that. Some people think they're the same. <laughs> they are not. There are two individuals, each with different skills and abilities. Judge Giamatti loves apple salads. Al Borland, he can fix things. But, they're and they're great. But a peek behind the curtain, every time I hit a drop, Mike's ears explode. Be a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Of time. Well, by the end of the show, they'll be exploded but like if i hit let's, like josh oh, stanley in there no, was that, that was was okay right. it's it's the internet does funny things to audio sometimes so i just wanted you to know that i might be able to like if you see him jump in the corner of the screen maybe i'll try i to. remember when i was remote a couple weeks ago and piped in <laughs> when you would hit a drop my ears bled <laughs> oh yeah is that, oh, one, is yeah. that one a little worse that, mike feeling now <laughs> i'm awake <laughs> All right, we are talking about bounce back players for 2020. Uh, now, Jason may want the opposite. He may want to close his ears when we talk about one of my guys. It's almost become a joke around the office to bring his name up. But I will not let your kind of oppressive uh, wet blanket 
takes on this player over the last two years bring me down. Oh, they they brought everyone comfort last year. When I, I know was they right. really they really did. <laughs> but you were this is you, double. Okay, can bag. I give you partial credit? No, I only accept full credit for telling people that you should be out on AJ Green last year, and then he didn't play a game. All right. The reason I the reason I brought it up as partial credit was only that a lot of our discussion and argument in the offseason about AJ Green was about whether he would perform when he's on the field. We didn't get to see that part play out. And so certainly your advice was 100%. The end result was what you wanted. You were off of AJ Green and he never played. He wasn't worth the investment. He is my bounce back player, one of my two for today's show. And uh you know you can read the resume of AJ Green. Everybody knows the resume of AJ Green. Uh, you know, a top talent wise, when he's at mm-hmm. his best, when he's healthy, he's a dominant player. He's had three different seasons with twelve hundred plus and ten plus touchdowns. So when he and he's done that with, you know, Andy Dalton in the National Ooh. Football League. I look. I've I've heard that Andy Dalton is very good, especially compared to to Dak Prescott. Yeah, you said you the, were the people in my mentions. You were really getting. You were talking about Dak not getting paid yet, and right. you're surprised at how many people have come out of the woodwork to support Andy Dalton. Well, they're just or very anti Dak. Anti Dak. Pe- people need to understand. Dak Prescott is a very good quarterback. Yes, he is. Andy Dalton is a quarterback. Yeah, he's now a backup. <laughs> yeah, without question. And so, you know. My logic for the A.J. Green bounce back risk, like I'm not saying everybody out there has to go and take that chance. He's he's being drafted in the late sixth round, sometimes in the seventh round. Last time we saw him on a football field for through eight games, he, he was averaging 85 yards a game, which is a 1,300-plus yard pace. He had six touchdowns in eight games. That's the last we've seen him. Now, it's been a long time. And I'm not saying everybody has to take the chance. I mean, you know, not everybody wants to go hang gliding. Is that fair? They That's think, fair. They think uh, risky, right? Would you go hang gliding? It's really not risky. It just appears sounds exhilarating. It appears risky, but you, I, I looked this up. You got the same odds of dying in a car crash as you do hang gliding. But some people are going to stay away from it because of what it appears. You looked up hang gliding. I really did. I wanted to for, see for your argument. For <laughs> just it was a curiosity thing, Mike. <laughs> Love it. Look, love hang gliding you know deaths you prove that AJ, AJ Green. Green is a great bounce back player. I didn't quite put it like that. But here's what we know going into the year. Like I said, you don't have to go hang gliding. I might go hang gliding. Zach Taylor came out and said uh, everything's been positive. He's fully healthy. So Zach Taylor's come out and said he's healthy. In my opinion, he could be playing with the best quarterback he's had. I mean, he, he hasn't had a uh, tremendous quarterback. He's had a quarterback in Andy Dalton. But he has 6,000-plus seasons, and he's got these double-digit touchdowns. And we all know. We've all seen A.J. Green at his best. He's being drafted right now, and this is where kind of the crux of the argument is, with a bounce-back chance on A.J. Green. He's being drafted right next to Tyler Boyd, the 29th wide receiver off the board. Look, there are 32 teams that have a wide receiver one on them. A.J. Green's being drafted as the 29th wide receiver off the board. He's their clear number one wide receiver. So if you want to steer clear, you don't want to go hang gliding, that's cool. But he is a talent that is far greater than the 29th overall wide receiver. And in my opinion, again, it's that risk reward of you could have an every week starter at wide receiver. If your draft goes a certain way, you you lean heavy on, maybe you take an early tight end, early quarterback, you go RB heavy. I just think a guy like A.J. Green, who could be a starter from day one if he's healthy, putting up prolific numbers, like what's his what's his stat line if he plays sixteen, Jason? I can tell you exactly what I said. You projected him, him for sixteen I games. I did project him for sixteen Impossible. games. Impossible. Um, I have him with a hundred. Someone's going hang gliding. I have him with hundred and twelve targets for sixty six receptions, oh. nine hundred and twenty five yards, and sixty six touchdowns. Uh, what? That's baloney. If he plays sixteen, that's hogwash. Uh, what are you doing? What I am doing Don't, is... You should say you didn't stat him for 16, because there's no way that yeah. that's 16. What I am doing is uh, taking uh, the fact that there is a rookie quarterback who historically do not throw a ton of yards, and you know, it, I, I've, I've got Joe Burrow at, at over 4,000, just barely over 4,000 yards, which is great, and that puts A.J. Green just under 1,000. You know, it's one of those things where... 
whether or not this is out with the old and with the new, which it seems that way, you're bringing in obviously uh, the the number one overall draft pick. You draft T Higgins. You're uh, you know you're you're going youth and future, or whether this is we are trying to be the absolute best team we can be. AJ Green being the the veteran is healthy and out here able to dominate. Uh, th- that's just the tale. One of those two things are going to happen. And if the latter happens, you'll be right here, Andy. I just don't see that as my outlook on the Bengals. Now, I, I just are you, never... Are you considering that his rookie year in 15 games with a rookie quarterback who was a second-round pick, not the first overall pick, he was 65 for over 1,007? How old was A.J. Green then? How he was, was a he rookie. 30 is he one? currently the age of Julio Jones, whom I believe you have projected in your top five? And was he coming off of a really bad injury where he missed a whole season? Where he's perfectly healthy. This is a combination now? thing. Look, I could be wrong on AJ Green. I could, but I, you know, I've said this in the past, and you we weren't? we know this. We know this from history. A lot of times, when the big body wide receivers, when it falls off, it's done. It's gone. But, no matter how great they were before, Andre Johnson was. Which, the best. which is a perfect way to bring you back to day one, the beginning of this argument, which is I give you credit last year for keeping people away from him. It benefited their team. But what you just said, you cannot prove on the field yet because A.J. Green on the field is a 1,312 touchdown pace the last time we saw him, and we didn't get to see it last year. We didn't get to see that part of the argument because you said the same thing last year. You said when it falls off, it falls off big, and I expect it to fall off, but we haven't got to see it. So that's the gamble, right? Sure. The gamble sure. is, that's is the he gamble. the same player? And I would think, like, I never really buy into the rebuild mentality in the NFL because if Zach Taylor tries to rebuild this team with youth, he's just gone. He's just fired. They just get rid of him. So they could have let A.J. Green go. They could have traded him last year. They kept him around. I'm taking my shot on him as a bounce back. I agree with your premise in, in rebuild uh, for the majority of the NFL teams. People are always trying to obviously win. Uh, but I do think when you have the 101 and you draft a quarterback with first, you know that you're looking towards the future of your uh, for your organization. Um, and it, it buys you a little bit more time. All right. And here's the thing about bounce back players, right? We're talking, we each have two bounce back players. All of them disappointed last year. That's you can't bounce back off of an amazing right, and we, season. And we could easily have a show that says, you know, what do I always say? Certain players are D U N. They're right. done they're yes. done. You could easily have a show where we're all taking players that we don't think are gonna bounce back and their careers are over. So there are two narratives for all of these players. Yes. Um I am going I the two players that I picked both have what I think is the exact same situation. You are asking yourself if they are D-U-N. Because yes. if they're not, I mean, we talk about this, look at look at how fantasy football works. You need a talented player with opportunity, those two things. If you have, uh, I think opportunity is first, is primary, and then if they're talented, that's where fantasy stardom comes in. That's where the, the counting stats are flowing and your points are great. Both of these players that I have picked are clearly talented players players they've succeeded before and obviously have the opportunity in front of them the question is do they have it or is it do you in my first player is adam Thielen. yeah is he done mm-hmm. is he is he finished no, he's not i don't no. think he's finished at all he's 30 years old so this isn't he hasn't reached an age point that's you know a, a breaking point for wide receivers usually that happens closer to the the 32nd birthday like aj green's birthday <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how old is AJ Green right now? No, he's, thir- he's thirty-two. Okay, well, <laughs> that, no, that, I was making the joke. Yes. I was making the like, I, yes, yes. Like, I'm, I'm, I didn't think you would be adding little, to my argument, yeah. but yes. Um, so Adam Thielen is is thirty years old. Obviously, the opportunity is there for him. He is the clear wide receiver one for his team. And you can have whatever argument you want, whether he needs to be in the slot or whether he's going to be outside or whether Diggs not being there means the coverage is going to be more diff. Yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. He is the primary target for this team in the National Football League. Kirk Cousins is going to throw for 4,000 yards and, you know, or close to it. And he is going to get a huge target market share. Here's the thing about Adam Thielen is 
you think last year we saw so much struggle with injury, right? He, he he injured himself in week seven. And from that point on, if you had Adam Thielen last year, you remember he would come back a little quicker than they expected. He missed a couple weeks, came back, and you're like, oh, man, do I start him right back? Do I not? And a lot of people chose to start him, and then he got injured immediately in that game. And the rest of the time, the rest of that season, until the very end, he was basically injured. So how was he the first six weeks of the season? Did you Do you remember? That well, I'm Adam, staring at it. He's a little up and down. Yeah. Well, up and down, but over the first six weeks, he was the wide receiver nine. He was a top 10 <laughs> wide receiver through the first six weeks. He sure. got a lot of touchdowns. I mean, you, you can say whatever you want about, oh, they want to run the ball more. Well, if, if you run the ball more, you might be more efficient in the passing game. All I know is this. Adam Thielen was a top 10 receiver three years ago two years ago, and last year until he got injured and then he was out. Now he's the clear wide receiver one for his team, so I think he's in I, prime for a bounce back. I got two two questions because I was going to kind of try to define what bounce back means for Adam Thielen. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 15 right now, mm -hmm. so I would tend to think that people, more people agree with you than don't. Good. Because wide, receiver, people. wide receiver 15 <laughs> is... Almost crediting him with that bounce back. Yeah, I would. Say that's exactly the line that I would say is a bounce back. Okay. If he's a top fifteen wide receiver this year, then he bounced back into supreme relevance. Yeah, and I think that that's probably a fair. Like I, I like that place for him. I have him right now as my wide receiver eleven. So I have him finishing as a wide receiver one this season, and uh, mm -hmm. that would be a great bounce back from his injury of the second half of last year. I've really been thinking about Justin Jefferson in that offense too, and whether we. You know, when you're staring down the Jalen Ragers or the Jerry Judys, whether Jefferson needs to start inching his way into those conversations with that offense, with Stephon Maybe. Diggs le leaving and what Jefferson brings. He has a lot of opportunity. I, yeah. You know, just there have been players who have broken the mold and they've been really valuable for fantasy from the slot. Adam Thielen has be before Julian Edelman. But generally speaking, uh, the the better fantasy production comes from the outside, and I don't think – I don't think that's where Jefferson's going to live, but yeah, he should be in that conversation. All right, Mike, who's your first bounce back candidate we should discuss? Well, it's, it's very interesting because you're going to feel like, wait, did I just rewind the podcast because this sounds just like Jason's argument for a player. Oh, it's going to be a good <laughs> argument. <laughs> so this player, uh, he's a running back through week eight before his first injury. He was the RB10 overall, and he was the RB10 in points per game. I'm talking about James Conner running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who 50% of his games, he was a top 24 guy, and 30% of his injury marred season. He was still a running back one, and that was on an absolute dumpster fire of an offense. Like, Pittsburgh was so bad last year compared to what we are used to. So the previous five years, Pittsburgh top 10 in yards in points for five years straight, 2014 through 2018. Big Ben is gone. They dropped to 30th in yards and 27th in points because the quarterback play was so bad. And yet James Conner, before he got his first injury, was still a top 10 running back who was getting it done. Uh, you have... The fact that just before the draft, Mike Tomlin again reiterated that he is a featured runner coach. He wants a featured runner, and he said, quote, James is a featured guy and proven runner when healthy. We're excited about him getting back to health and playing in 2020. And then so like the people who are, what about Benny Snell? Well, his he had a quote about Benny Snell in that exact same conversation. He said, Benny Snell is a guy that is capable of being a featured runner who plays you know, similar to James, he's capable if James is unavailable. Meaning, it's still James Conner. They didn't do anything of note in the draft. Look, I like Anthony McFarland. He's a fun player. Anthony McFarland is not someone who is going to replace James Conner as a featured running back. He just does not have the size. He'll be in there for some some fun, explosive plays, but Conner is the main guy. If, if the Steelers are jumping back up, which I imagine they're going to be vastly improved with Big Ben as the quarterback and James Conner is the featured 
running back, like he's going as the RB20 right now in in best ball drafts. It's a it's a matter of health. I get it. His it's it's very hard to buy into James Conner being healthy because he was still a bit banged up even a couple years ago when he had the the breakout season when he was a Pro Bowl player. But the running back position, everybody has a huge chance of getting hurt, and I think that James Conner can easily bounce back and return massive value of being the 20th running back selected. Yeah, I mean, Con- Conner is kind of like my A.J. Green story of last year. Was I validated? I mean, I was off of Conner all off season. Was I validated? In- I mean, people who didn't, who drafted James Conner benefited or didn't draft and benefited from that advice, but I don't feel like I got to see what I should have been able to see with James Conner or Juju last year, where on the field, Conner was by far, in a way, on film, the best running back on the team. Yeah. But the team it had massive is. struggles, and he had massive injuries. And you had the general manager come out and give a different quote <laughs> than uh, his head coach, talking about the disappointment in Conner and the health last year. So there are question marks, and I don't know how to think about him. I'm just kind of talking about him and. In so, general. And so here's and on the last thing uh, on top of that, uh Pro Football Focus just released their their offensive line rankings heading into the season. Number they one. They still have the Steelers. They have the Steelers as a top ten line. Yeah. Like top ten line, higher scoring team, featured running back. Right. It's it's the same argument as as last year, but now instead of the first round, you're getting him as the twentieth running back. James James Conner could easily be a top twelve running back. The whole the whole question is can he stay healthy? He's he's he has not proven that he can take that workload yet, and that I think is the issue. You know, he missed with a quadricep contusion. He missed with the ankle. He he's he's missed uh, for a concussion. He has a uh, a big injury history. Like you said, uh, running backs get injured more often. That makes sense. But if he is going to be a feature back, can he actually withstand that? Can he? Uh, play 16 and that's my big worry with James Conner are you you know I don't think you need 16 from him like back well, his breakout year was 13 games if you if you're getting 13 games uh from a guy who's very very often giving you top 12 production I think that well you have, okay so you're very happy with that draft pick counterpoint to that though is if James Conner can't stay healthy the team's not going to give him the chance to make you happy in 13 games those 13 games won't be the kind of workload you want because James Conner will have proven that he can't hold up to the workload. Like what we saw at the end of the year Correct. when he kept coming back, but they were they were monitoring his workload because of the injuries. So I, I don't disagree with the bounce back pick. I'm curious when you compare him to a guy like Mark Ingram. Like wh- who would you rather have on this team? Ingram's probably Ooh, not going to get I banged would. up, but he might not have the workload. But Conner might not get the workload because they don't want to get him banged up. Right, I have I have Mark Ingram. Let's see, they're back to back right. to me, which is why I brought it up. I have Connor one spot ahead of Ingram, but I have I have Connor one spot ahead of Ingram huh. as I well. I have Connor like two Mark spots Ingram. ahead of Ingram. So we all would would take the shot on the bounce back. He's versus, riskier. He's riskier, but yes. at this price, I mean, what what Mike is saying is he he still has the same exact everything that made him a back of the first round pick right. last year. Yeah, he was a high pick. But he doesn't cost a first rounder this year. You can get him much later in your drafts. All right, my second bounce back is another wide receiver with a very similar narrative to the AJ Green argument. So we don't have to linger too long because I think you guys believe in him. Mm-hmm. But it's Ty Hilton. Ty Ty Hilton is being drafted in a very similar place to where AJ Green is. He's the wide receiver twenty seven off the board right now. You, That's wild. To you me. know, you kind of have that. I don't know, just some sort of fatigue with T.Y. Hilton in the fantasy community because he's being drafted as wide receiver 27, but he's literally never finished at that spot. I mean, his entire career when he's played, 24, 19, 11, 21, 5, 25, 14. Last year, he missed six games and obviously finished outside of that uh, of that range. But when he's played 14, 15, 16 games, he always finishes ahead of where his draft capital is right now. He's the number one on the team. Same argument I made for A.J. Green. Being drafted super late. Last year, Phillip Rivers, who's his new quarterback. Fourth most deep balls in football, something that I think T.Y. Hilton excels uh, at receiving. And he's just 30 years old. So it's similar to your Adam Thielen story. You know, Hilton, 
hasn't shown anything on the field to show that he's not the same talented, you know, capable wide receiver. He's just not being drafted anywhere near where I think he belongs. Yeah, yeah, I I think uh we we've talked about uh, TY Hilton a lot this off season. The fact that he has a better quarterback and perceived health, I mean he he should be he should definitely be better than the wide receiver 27. Um my bounce back player, this is a guy that I left the season pretty confident I would not believe in a bounce back. Because I questioned, I I told you I picked two guys that I'm wondering are they DUN done? Uh, Adam Thielen, I don't think he's done. And David Johnson. Oh, my oh goodness. My. David Johnson. Oh, my. I questioned whether he was done. We are Cardinals fans. We watch, you know, well, we watch every NFL game, but we're we're watching those ones with a little bit more um, desire for that <laughs> team to succeed. And so we're like, get him off the field. But, you know, every, everybody else was faster to the edge than David Johnson. Well, he looked say, a little bit games, slow. It looked like we were playing him in slow motion, but it was actually full speed. And so, you know, I thought I would go into the offseason thinking he's D-U-N. Um, and the reality is I, I went back and I actually watched the last two healthy games of David Johnson last season because we've all seen the one clip of him trudging along the Tampa Bay uh, clip you know barely yeah he just looked like he was carrying a tuba while he was running <laughs> there it is and so but I went back and I watched and he didn't look bad he did not look bad before that injury through the you know there were a couple of scheme things where it he didn't seem to fit the system does David Johnson right now have at least what Carlos Hyde has? Yes. I think that right now David Johnson has at least what Carlos Hyde had, and he was a thousand-yard rusher for this team behind this offensive line. I think the scheme matches what David Johnson is good at doing, and they have one of the most vacated targets in the league because DeAndre Hopkins is gone. Or highest number of vacated yes, targets. highest yeah. number of vacated targets. <laughs> uh, they're among the tops. And we have a lot of proof that when a team loses a lot of targets, they start throwing the ball to the running back more. Now, that's important for a team that hasn't usually thrown a ton to the running back. But they also didn't have great receiving options until Duke Johnson, and they started throwing him the ball. I have David Johnson down for... 55 targets. 55! And I think if you can like Jason's playing so loud. Jason's playing I'm the deceased. hits right now. I oh, believe man. that if David Johnson rushes for a thousand yards, which if Carlos Hyde can do it, so can David Johnson. Uh, Bill O'Brien is going to want to prove that he was correct in making the trade. David Johnson is going to be a full bell cow in this system, and I think he's going to get targets. He was really valuable for fantasy last season. You know, say whatever you want about how he looked and he was, uh, you know, trudging along. But before he got injured, he was pretty great for fantasy almost every single week. Yeah, I mean, he was on the pass catching. And, and I don't love the argument that Bill O'Brien wants to prove himself correct because he made the trade for Duke Johnson, too. So he can prove himself that Duke Johnson was the right guy if David can't run. So it comes down to that first argument to me where – you're looking at the film. You think he's got at least what Carlos Hyde has, if not better. If that plays out, then yeah, I think we all look at him as a volume guarantee. He's right a volume now, guarantee. Of, of all the players in football, but, that's hard to find. But what if he's still got it? He's a volume guarantee, and what if right. he's actually still got it? He was the running back six before he got injured in week seven. He was a running back six through uh, last yeah, but if season. He, if he still had it, Jason, would you have been doing this dance? Nope, and this was a good dance because the Cardinals got DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, sir. I think I think we all were. If David still got it, I think he can have it in a volume capacity, but he certainly isn't the guy from two, three years ago. Sure, I have him right now as my running back fourteen. So Ooh. he's outside. The, he's outside the top twelve, but he is. That feels a little spicy. He is in that upper tier because of the volume I expect him to get. Yeah, Mike, what are you, you in on Andy? that? I've got him at sixteen. I've D I've DJ at sixteen. Where do you got it? Where do I have him? Let me check. Yeah, half point. Uh fifteen. All so right. we're all we're all together. <laughs> we're all together. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I have your your next bounce back candidate right behind him, Mike. Oh, all right. Well, I well, have. Just look then at you'll Sorry, hold on one sec. Let, let's look at the all stat right. line real quick because I want right. to see where you have him projected. I have David Johnson for nine hundred and seventy yards. 
37 receptions, nine total touchdowns, and that's what puts him at 15. I've got him. I have him just over 1,000 rushing yards. I, I, Funny enough, I also have him at 37 receptions. Okay. Got him at 41 receptions, uh, 1,060 yards, and eight total touchdowns. It's going to be interesting because Duke Johnson, as always, you know, right around five a carry no matter what team he's on whenever he's playing. DJ down at 3.7 last year, but obviously DJ's the guy. All right. Well, I will jump in with my bounce back player. It's a, it is another running back, and – I honestly, my my rank between where his ADP is right now, uh, th- that differential is not that high. But when when you're in these uh, higher rounds, these higher draft capital picks, it, it makes a difference. And I have Le'Veon Bell right now. Oh man, <laughs> that ringing in your ears? Yeah, you know, but what? Oh, that was what? I was so happy that that drop was still in the board <laughs> for multiple uh, reasons. I, I have Lev. Just outside of, of my running back ones, uh, I think that he can bounce back in a pretty decent way. What's interesting about Le'Veon Bell is he was still the RB17 last year. So he finished as the running back 17 in 15 games, being drafted as the running back 18. Uh, his his biggest competition is is Frank Gore? Like, I mean, I, I don't really get why Le'Veon Bell would be off the field besides uh, a black hole could suck him away, of course. That that thing, you never know what a black hole is going to do these days. But the Jets were just so bad last year. 17.2 points per game, 31st in the league. I think Sam Darnold is better than that. He had, he had mono. Mono just takes, it really takes it away from you. And like, at what point was Sam Darnold recovered? I don't know if he was ever recovered. Like, can you recover from mono and go into an NFL season? That seems like something that I wouldn't guess you could. We don't really have a lot of data, though, on players getting mono. Do you guys have anybody else? No, mo- most of the players are over the age of 17. <laughs> so we don't have a lot of data on mono in the NFL. Uh, but, but Le'Veon Bell, he's... We, we knew it was going to be tough sledding for Le'Veon Bell moving from the Steelers to the Jets, and I didn't like his draft price last year. Now he's at a point where I am perfectly happy to take him. If the Jets improve at all as a team, Le'Veon Bell will feel the impact of that. But, the Jets, the, but oh, Mike, Yes, voice of public opinion. What about Frank Gore, the Infinity Stone? Yeah, no, I, I know he's there. I know that Frank Gore is there. And Adam Gaze did decide that he would play Frank Gore like over Kenyon Drake at one point. When you say in, Adam in Gaze's name, career. just let me put this out there. I the hair on my arm stands up. <laughs> it is it's a little terrifying. Is there any team that like the Jets are the one thing that stands out to me is this could all explode. The Darnold plus Gaze plus Lev Bell situation. Look, is and, terrifying. and if it explodes if it explodes, it is what it was last year, right. which was bad and he was the running back 17 in 15 games they spent uh, a lot of the offseason trying to upgrade their offensive line a first round pick uh they they grabbed a center in free agency who was a top 10 uh graded out center from pro football focus last year like they have tried i can't say for sure if it's going to be upgraded but again this is if everything is status quo for lev bell you got a guy who's going to return his his adp uh, they, in, in regards to the vacated targets, like it's Jamison Crowder who's a pretty good wide receiver. Then you have the unknown of Denzel Mims. We we like him, but he's still a rookie. And then Brashard Perryman, who has like what six good games <laughs> to his NFL career. I mean, I I think Le'Veon Bell has the same chance to have huge volume again. And he, things just went so terrible for him last year. His longest run on the year was 19 yards. Like <laughs> he, like Leonard Fournette, you just didn't see touchdowns. It with 245 carries. The dude had three rushing touchdowns. I mean, there's, there are so many positive regression, re- positive regression markers for Le'Veon Bell that I can see. Can you just promise a me a handful of those hitting? And then Le'Veon Bell is, is well worth the draft price. Can you promise me that he'll give me at least, like one week in the top five or something. <laughs> I can't do that. He reminds me of the Clinton that. Portis days 
where each and every week Clinton Portis what was it was Washington. He would get you ten points on the dot. I liked having him on my roster. No, it's nice because he's not going to be your running back one. Right, he's somebody that you're filling in at your running back two, or even your three, where he's being drafted right now. Like on our Scotty Fishbowl, team? like on our Scotty Fishbowl team, and and we did, we chose. We, ironically, we were, you know, we could have taken James Conner for the upside or Love Bell for safety. We went Love Bell because he was our third. He's guaranteed the volume. We know he's able to, to to handle that kind of a workload. And the thing about Love Bell that I will say. You know, because I, I do worry about the DUN with Lev Bell. He's got a lot of mileage on his legs, um, but he is someone that excels with a good offensive line. And then their offensive line was such trash. His vision is second to none. He, that was what always made Lev Bell super special for fantasy. And they have put so much money and capital into the offensive line that if this ends up a, a just a top fifteen line. If they just end up a better than average line, I think Lev Bell's going. He was already for a carry last year. If he gets back to four or five with that kind of volume, could you be mean three point two a carry. Oh, was he three point two last year? <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh man, man what was, was I looking bad. at? Oh, that was gross. <laughs> but I mean, the, if the offensive line gets better and he can use his style of running that is very unique, then maybe we see. Uh, I, I watched a lot of Jets last year. The three point two doesn't really matter to me. Because I watched them hand him the ball just and over just and over. I mean, Darnold would be out of games. And it was just hand him, hand him, hand him, hand him, right into the butts of his linemen or right into, you know. It was more of just the volume kind of situation where he didn't have a shot. He, mm -hmm. You know, six touchdowns, or wait, four touchdowns on the year last year as well. Correct. So that's another one of those positive regression markers Mike's talking about. All right, that is it for today's episode. want to thank Pristine Auction, the best place for autographed sports memorabilia. All autographed items are authenticated by the top authentication companies in the industry, and they guarantee the authenticity, including one that sold yesterday, a Kenny Galladay signed Lions mini mm. helmet, $61.42. Go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. All right, that does it. We'll be back on Thursday, and we are up to three shows a week now, so a Thursday and a Saturday episode coming this week. Don't miss it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, don't forget that the glorious sizzle of Omaha Steaks is on the grill is the official soundtrack of summer. And Omaha Steaks isn't just steak, it's guaranteed perfection in every single bite. So order your grand summer grill out package today and get four free Omaha Steaks burgers and four free gourmet jumbo franks. Don't wait. Visit omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar to shop summer grill packs today.